Welcome to the Browns Blitz. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd, and this is episode 21. I'm your host today, Rod Bloom, and I'm going it alone today. Uh, my partner, Sam Maddie's not available, so uh, we're going to go a little bit shorter today. I don't think you guys want to hear me talk for an hour all by myself, so um, we're going to uh, just kind of go over some things, uh, of course, wrap up the Browns-Ravens game and do a little bit of a preview about the 49ers and go over a couple other things, and, and we're going to call it a day. Uh, of course, it was a um, nice big one for the Browns, but um, before we get into that, we always do our Blitz beverages. Unfortunately, I am not someone who likes to drink alone, so, so tonight I am drinking some water. I thought about getting a beer out, but uh, I just thought better of it at this point. Just kind of shorten up the show a little bit and just kind of stick with some water. Uh, just kind of keep things flowing a little bit. So, uh, going to get right into the right into the Browns Ravens game. I think this is a game that a lot of us really didn't know what to expect, and uh, I think we were hoping that the Browns would show up for this game, that they would kind of figure things out going into this game. Uh, we were hoping that the O line would would play a lot better, that Baker would figure some things out, and that the defense would be able to contain Lamar Jackson, you know, enough to enough to give the the offense a chance to to score some points and, and stay in the game. And really, mission accomplished on all three of those things. Uh, I don't know that we could have asked for a better game. You're talking about a division game on the road, uh, first division game. Um, you know, Baltimore had, had two big wins, and you know, I, I guess they 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 weren't really in the game with Kansas City, but you know, the, the final score looked looked kind of like they could play with them a little bit. So uh, they looked like a pretty good team coming into this. So so for the Browns to go in and did what they you know do what they did. In Baltimore it was pretty darn impressive, and it re- it really started with Baker. Baker was just he was the Baker from from 2018 from the end of 2018. He didn't hold on to the ball. He made decisions. He got rid of it quickly. Uh, the offensive line I think played better. They gave him more protection, but I think a, a lot of the problems that we'd seen from the offensive line were, in, in, in many cases, were because Baker was holding out onto the ball too long in previous weeks. So uh, Baker was more decisive. He he came out firing. Uh, he, he was twenty of thirty for three hundred and forty-two yards. Uh, granted, you know the the touchdowns touchdown passes aren't exactly piling up yet for Baker, but the but the yardage. The, the passing yards are uh, so he's he's uh, he's building. Okay, guys, he he's looking. Uh, starting with this game, he's looking like the Baker from last season. He looked comfortable. Uh, this is against a Ravens defense who, you know, I, I don't think we, I don't think we're. Um, I think Sam and I talked about it. This isn't the same as the Ravens defense from last year, but still pretty decent defense. So uh, for him to go out and throw for 342 yards, uh, he had the one pick, but I think that was kind of on Jarvis for stopping his, cutting off his route and not getting in there. Uh, I don't really think that, I think if Jarvis continues his route, uh, that's probably not an interception. And that's probably the only thing Jarvis did wrong all day. <laughs> Jarvis had, had his probably, um, you know, I'm not sure what Jarvis has done in his career as far as number of uh, touchdown receptions in a game, but I, I know it was a career high with 167 receiving yards on the eight catches. Um, unfortunately, he did that in three quarters, uh, pretty much, I believe. I don't think he played at all in the fourth quarter uh, before he went out and went into a, a concussion protocol. So, uh, monster game from Jarvis. He, he was pretty much, uh, I mean, he was Baker's main target, and it kind of uh, Baker Baker needed him because Odell was was uh, locked up with with, uh, with Humphrey and and pretty much a, a battle royale all game long where where uh, Humphrey uh, Humphrey was holding him 
on on just about every play. If he wasn't holding him, he was uh, tackling him and choking him, and they were punching each other. And I, I I just couldn't believe some of the replays, the stuff that was going on between the two of those guys. Penalties were just weren't being called. I think Humphrey may have been called for two holding penalties, but he probably could have, could have been called for a holding penalty on almost every play of the game when he was when he was covering uh, OBJ. So I, I guess the officials were letting him play. But, you know, Odell had to had to have been pretty darn frustrated. But on the other hand, I think, and I'll bet he was excited for Jarvis uh, for the game that he had, and he was probably uh, really excited about the win. So, um, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think somebody's going to pay for that game, though, uh, here pretty soon, and uh, I'm sure – Pretty sure OBJ is going to have a monster game coming up. Uh, the offensive line, they did their job, and you know put them and Baker together. And I mean, this uh, the Baltimore Ravens defensive line is is, is pretty stout. So um, the Browns offensive line did did a did an excellent job. The, the other guy we need to talk need to mention is Ricky Seals Jones. Um, I, I got some love on Twitter because I sent a tweet out saying that um, watch for him to be more involved. Well, you know, I, I'll take the credit. I was expecting it to be a little bit more gradual. I didn't really expect him to have a touchdown catch this week and, and uh, you know, three receptions for 82 yards. But uh, the guy can play. He, Freddie's familiar with him. Um, he's, a, he's a blocker, and he's got good hands. So uh, the, the Browns are going to play anybody who steps up and has the ability. And uh, Ricky looked really good, so I think he's going to get. Um, I think he's going to get more playing time. I think he's going to get. A, uh, I would say a few more targets, but the issue there is, I, I think he's going to get more tight end targets. You know, when the Browns want to go to the tight end, but um, the thing there is that the Browns reportedly are are going to have uh, Jarvis Landry available Monday, and it's also. Uh, Callaway is going to be back, and Rashard Higgins is also reportedly going to be playing Monday. So put all those guys, uh, make all those guys available. Uh, there's only so many balls to go around. Uh, it's a great scenario for the team. Um, it means that some guys aren't going to get as many targets as they would probably like, but it's a nightmare for the defense, and it, it's just it's it's the it's the kind of thing that sets up really great for Baker. So he likes to spread the ball around, and we all know the chemistry he has with Rashard Higgins. And um, I just, I th- I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with more healthy receivers out there. The defense, I, I tell you what, I don't think you can be too impressed, or can be, <laughs> can can say, um, can really overstate how good the defense has played uh, the last few weeks, really. Um, I, I know that I know they lost to the Rams, but they held the Rams to 20 points. Um, the Rams' offense is pretty darn good. Okay, and they're good, and I know they gave up a lot of yardage and some touchdowns. But to, you hold the Rams to 20 points. You, you, your offense needs to find a way to score and win. So and they did that, missing four. You know, all four starters. And, you know, all four of their uh, starters in the secondary. Uh, still missing three starters in the secondary this week. They held a pretty potent Ravens offense to, um, well, you know, 25 points. But let's face it, uh, the last touchdown was in garbage time. Browns were playing soft, uh, let, letting him take what they wanted and just running some time off the clock. So, uh, you know, and they're, they're up by 20-some points at that at that point. So they were more than content to let the – Ravens slowly drive down the field with 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 short passes and, and eventually score a touchdown that took them a while to score. So uh, the defense and, and uh, St- Steve Wilkes, guys, Steve Wilkes has done an excellent job. Yeah, he's got some personnel out there, but man, you've got to you've got to know how to use these guys, and he's he's been phenomenal. I haven't, you know, I think some people have given him some credit, but I think he deserves a lot more credit than what he's getting. Yeah, I, I can't wait to just, you know, keep watching this defense and hopefully see him get some guys back and 
and we'll just watch them take on some some of these better you know, you know some of the some of the offenses that are coming up um you know the, the 49ers this week which which I'll talk about shortly um that that game you know that that offense can definitely do some things and then uh, of course you got the Pats coming and 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 some other teams so the defense is going to be tested and it just seems like they're kind of catching their groove right now and hopefully they can they can get healthy uh, healthier especially in the secondary and, and have more options there penalties the Browns they're still committing penalties but they were down to six penalties against the Ravens they've they've decreased every week on the penalties and some of that, you know, some of that's going to depend how the game was called. I, I think these officials against with the Ravens, they just weren't calling a lot of stuff. They were letting them play, but um, six penalties on the Browns, three on the Ravens. Uh, there could have been a lot more called on the Ravens, um, pro- probably some more called on the Browns. But I think I think the Browns have gone from 18 penalties to nine penalties to uh, I believe there was. Uh, Maybe I, I think there was seven or eight against the Rams, and then six this week. So uh, keep improving on that, and you're helping yourself a lot. Finally, the man in the game was Nick Chubb, and you know uh, Sam and I have talked a lot about it. We want to see him get 25 carries a game. Well, the Browns just kept pounding him, kept pounding him, and you know the early part of the game, it, it, he was working hard. He was getting his three yards a carry, three yards a carry. And, and, uh, the guy, the guy is amazing. He just, um, he's just a, he's just a professional, um, all the way. And I've, I've loved Nick Chubb since he showed up in Cleveland. I really didn't have a big opinion of him either way going into the draft because I really didn't know he was on the Browns radar, but when he came into Cleveland, just, Seeing the way he carries himself, uh, just just the kind of guy he is. He is the kind of guy I want on the Browns, I want to root for, and man, the guy is good. He is so darn good. He didn't even get to 25 carries this week. He only got to 20, but 165 yards, three touchdowns, um, and I think the last three or four carries, he didn't get a lot because, you know, the Browns were just trying to run the clock down. He, I think he was at one point, he was at like uh, um, 16 carries for 168 or something. And his, his average was over 10. So, so the last, uh, you know, the last possession or so kind of, kind of pu- pulled his average down a little bit to an eight, 8.2. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, Dontrell Hilliard even kicked in a touchdown um, touchdown run and another 27 yards. So the Browns rushed for what over 100 and uh, over 190 yards and four touchdowns. Um, you take that. This is the, this is the AFC North. Play good defense. Run the football. This is what's going to win you games when it's when it's colder and heck outside. And the Browns are putting have put a great formula together. Uh, Baker. Baker seems a lot more comfortable. I think um, I think he's going to start stretching the field a little bit more, uh, especially with getting some of these receivers back. But but man, with with Nick Chubb, this is going to be this is going to be a team that that's going to run. Um, they're going to run run the ball a lot, and that's exactly what you do when you have a stud like Nick Chubb in the backfield. So um, again, I, that was just a very exciting game. I um, I was actually out of town. Sunday, believe it or not, guys. I, I think anybody that follows me knows that I am, I am a, I am a rock and roll kind of guy. Um, that's that's um, the kind of music I've listened to pretty much uh, my whole life. Just just what I like. But um, you know, I I was at a concert in in Detroit on uh, on Sunday, so I recorded the game. And I actually ended up watching it Monday, which which was good because it let me uh, it let me um, kind of take take more notes in, in that because I knew what was what was coming because I had kept up with the game and everything, um, so I I knew some of the key moments that were going to happen, so I was able to to watch it a little bit closer in that. But um, but Sunday I was at 
the Post Malone concert in Detroit, which is totally out of my comfort zone. Uh, I think my wife and I were probably the oldest people there. Um, fun, but anyways, uh, never been to anything like that, and I've been to plenty of rock concerts. I gotta say, uh, I didn't really care a whole lot for the opening acts, but Post Malone... <laughs> The guy can. The guy's got talent. The guy can sing. The guy put on a heck of a show. So I actually enjoyed that part of the show. So uh, that that was my Sunday. But uh, a lot of people were keeping me updated on what happened during the Browns game. Uh, people um, let me know as soon as Ricky Seals Jones scored that touchdown because my tweet was was relevant to it. But um, but that was my Sunday. I um, got up early Monday, came back, and I. Pretty much immediately started watching the Browns game. Knowing, it was probably almost more fun knowing that they had a win coming to, to watch it. And just knowing I was going to see three Nick Chubb touchdowns. So it, it was a lot of fun. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, go into the, uh, to the uh, 49ers game at this point. Um, I think a lot of people, you want... Uh, it's funny. People kind of went from... Almost feeling like that Ravens game was a must win. I heard pe- people tell- told me that this is a must win. They got to win this game. They got to win this game. Now it's like okay, now they got to put games back, back, back to back. They got to win two in a row to to prove something. They got to get something going. It, this is the tough part of the schedule. I mean, you know, they they just beat they just beat a division leader on the road. Now they got to fly out to the West Coast for a Monday night game against the 49ers, who, um, yeah, 49ers are 3 0. And then they got to host the Seahawks, who have looked pretty darn good this year. Then they got to go to Foxborough, which is after a bye. But still, you're playing the t- Patriots. We know what happens in Foxborough, guys. Um, so these, these are the four weeks that they had in a row. Okay. You can't expect, I don't care who you are. You can't expect to just start reeling off wins at this stretch of the schedule. So you have to respect this 49, 49ers team. This, this is a team with a, a great defensive line. Uh, they run the ball extremely well. I think they're one of the top, top few teams in the league at running the ball. So it's going to be, the game is going to be similar to uh, the game plan. It's going to be similar to what the Browns, I think, had to do, or, or maybe a combination of things, what the Browns have had to do over their last few games. You know, they had to stop the run against the Rams. And, um, you know, of course the pass too, but the Rams and the, and the Ravens uh, both want to run the football. Well, the, the 49ers are a similar team. Uh, 49ers also have that great defensive line, very similar to uh, to the Rams and um, the Ravens. Uh, Ravens defensive line is pretty tough too, so uh, it's not a big not a big difference in game planning for the Browns as far as those two facets of the game. Going out to the West Coast is tough. Playing on playing on a Monday night again. Um, hopefully the Browns are used to playing in prime time now. Um, but guys, th- this is going to be a tough game. So I'll, the good news is that um, that it sounds like uh, the Browns are going to get some guys back in Higgins and Callaway, and hopefully Jarvis. Uh, it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, that all three of those guys are going to play. Um, if that's the case, that's you know, th- that's good news. Uh, hopefully the defense can can play the way they've been playing and can keep the 49ers down. Uh, the reality is, in today's NFL, you can't expect to shut teams out. So keep keep the 49ers from, from scoring a lot, from the quick strikes, which is exactly what they did against the Ravens. And then let your offense go out there and do what they do. Pound the football, take the, stri- take the strikes when they get them, and, and, and get some points on the board. And if the Browns can play the way they did against the Ravens, they can play with anybody. And they have a, they have a shot to beat the 49ers. You know, I, I think uh, if you look at the 49ers' last game against the Steelers, Steelers gave them a great game. And I think if if we look at who's played who up to this point, um, I I think you have to assume that, that the Browns are a better football team than the Steelers right now. But, I mean, we'll find that out in a few weeks. So um, I, I think watching... 
the end of that game, that 49ers Steelers game, and knowing that knowing that the Steelers were able to play with them kind of made this 49ers game look a little bit different to me. Of course, that game was in Pittsburgh, whereas um, this game's going to be in San Francisco. So, um, so, so we'll see. It's, it's any given week, you know, can be a little bit different. So, I have a lot of confidence in this Browns uh, defense, and I think that uh, I think they'll be able to to hold the score down in this game. So, I I don't think they're going to shut the 49ers out completely, but I I can see them holding the 49ers down to to maybe 17 points, and I think the Browns are going to be able to move the football. So uh, I'm looking for a game like 27 to 17 Browns. I'm writing that one down. And if you're keeping score at home, I did have the Browns beating the Ravens last week, and I didn't write the scores. Down. I didn't write our score predictions down. But Sam had the Ravens winning a close one, and I had the Browns winning a close one. So the game wasn't that close, but um, I did have, I did get the win on that week. One thing I want to talk about is the, it's kind of what I talked briefly about a little earlier. People wanting the Browns, you know, now to to win every game. It's just expectations versus what I would call reasonable growth. The expectations is what everybody talked about before this. Can the Browns live up to the expectations that everybody's putting on them? Well, you know, the Browns were keeping that. They made it pretty clear that the expectations were outside and they have their own expectations inside. So it's that's not something that the Browns seem to be too worried about. But for us outside, you have to be realistic and look at the schedule and know that, yes, it takes some time for this team to grow together and to get a direction and to do, um, you know, to figure out what works best for them with the personnel, with the new coaching staff, uh, with the new head coach and everything. So for us to expect them, since they've lost a couple games, that they need to win every single game is just is crazy. You look at this division Yet the Bengals aren't going anywhere. Pittsburgh's already lost three games. Uh, Ravens are are two and two, and and really a, a half game or game, however you want to call it, behind the Browns because of the loss in the division. How many games do the Browns need to win? Well, they need to win as many as they can because you know you have your you have your playoff scenarios where you want to you know gain home field advantage and and everything else and and as many playoff games as you can, but who knows? I mean, it's possible eight, nine, ten wins wins this division, and you know, I, I predicted. Sure, I, I predicted twelve wins for this team. I still think that's possible. Uh, do I think it's realistic? Eh, probably not. Uh, but I, I think this team still has a really good shot at winning ten games. But are they going to win their next? Um, their next? Uh, how many games do they have left? Twelve games. No, that's not. It's not going to happen. So, uh, 49ers is a tough game. Uh, the Seahawks are a concern to me coming into Cleveland. Um, it, we'll see what happens. Uh, I just, I think the Browns have to be ready for everybody because people are gunning for the Browns because the Browns are this big story. So nobody's going to take the Browns lightly, especially now that they've got a couple wins. So the Browns can't take anybody lightly either. I also wanted to take a look at now that we are. 25% through the season. You guys know I'm a numbers guy, so I have to look at how does everybody's numbers prorate for a full season if we take a look at where we are right now. We played four games, 16 games on the year. Uh, Baker Mayfield's thrown for 1,147 yards. Multiply that times four, and you get for about 4,600 yards. That's not too shabby. We're not going to look at touchdowns because Baker has not hit his mark yet. He's only thrown four touchdown passes. I think he's, I'm pretty confident he's going to have more than 16 on the year. So Nick Chubb has rushed for 398 yards. That's going to be right at 1,600 yards for the season at, at that pace. And I know Kareem Hunt's coming back um, in, well, after, uh, Week uh, be week nine. Um, I'm counting the bye, 
So, um, so who knows what effect that'll have, but Nick's on the pace to rush for 1,600 yards. He's got four touchdowns, so that comes to 16 touchdowns as well. Uh, very nice numbers, considering you really feel like he hadn't done a whole lot until this game, but you look at the numbers, and they're pretty darn impressive. And then you, you feel like like uh, Odell and Jarvis. You know, Jarvis had a great game um, this week. Odell's got 308 yards receiving, even though nobody feels, you know, people feel like he really hasn't done a lot yet. And and I know we're talking touchdowns, you know, for these guys too. But uh, and Jarvis has 328 yards, so that's you know, if you just take 300 yards um, for each guy, that that's 1,200 yards for the full season. Pretty nice numbers. And again, those numbers can change when you get some receivers back, but it, it could also open things up for them. So. Um, so, I, I just love playing with numbers, guys, so I have to look at that. And then I want to look at, um, Miles Garrett has six sacks. If he can keep that pace up, that's 24 sacks, and that would obliterate the team record <laughs> of the, for the Browns, um, which is eluding me right now. I think it's, uh, I think it's right around 16, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, he, he's on pace to, to break that record pretty easily. Um, Larry ogunjobi has got three sacks, so, so that comes out to 12 for him. And, um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, some pretty nice numbers building up and it can, especially for the offense considering we, we really feel like the offense is just starting to hit its groove. So, um, you, you have to kind of like those. And I, I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot bigger and better things um, out of the offense coming, especially once they get through some of these next few games. I mean, they could put up some numbers against the 49ers, Seahawks. We know the Pats game is going to be tough. Um, Then they got the Broncos. uh, Bills game could be tough. Um, We'll see what happens in those two Steelers games. Uh, Dolphins game, yeah, you know, Dolphins. (laughs) I think we're all looking forward to that one, guys. So, um, but anyways, let's see. Um, I think I, I think I've uh, pretty much covered everything. I am not going to talk anyone's ear off any more than this. Um, I appreciate you all hanging with me for this episode of the Browns Blitz. You can catch me on Twitter at C L E Rod B, and you can find the Browns Blitz on iTunes also posted on spotify and podbean and the grueling truth carries our show as well so be sure and and check them out it's uh they on their website uh, if you just google the grueling truth they will pop up they're on twitter at grueling truth and they have our episodes as well thanks for listening and we will catch you next time